Family Theater presents Edmund Gwen and Dick Contino. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents the story of Little Tree, starring Edmund Gwen. And here is your host, Dick Contino. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives. If we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world, Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, The Story of Little Tree, starring Edmund Gwen as Grandpa. Over this hill is that little creek I was telling you about. Hurry! Yeah. Yeah, hold on a minute, Janie. That creek isn't going anywhere. Oh, it'll still be there whether we run or walk. How old are you anyway, Grandpa? Mm -hmm. Old enough to know better than to take any more of your Sunday hikes with you, young lady. Now, where, where's this brook you were telling me about? Right over here. See? Just over this bank. Oh, oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Mm, perfect spot to rest. What? Rest again? Again? When did we rest the first time? Well, you were talking about it just a minute ago. Yes, well, suppose we do it this time, hmm? Yeah, it looks like a good place. Ah. 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 Now that's... that's more like it. Grandpa, can I wait in the water? Oh, no, 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 my dear. Better not today, Janie. Remember, we promised your mother we'd be careful not to muss your good clothes. Shucks. Why does everyone have to get all dressed up? Just because it's Easter. But this is a very special day, Janie. People dress up because they're glad it's Easter. I'm not glad. I'd rather go waiting. Oh, but you ought to be glad, my dear. Why, even nature gets all dressed up for the occasion. Ah. Uh... Yes, yes, well, just look. Look round you. The flowers are all budding and beginning to bloom. The grass is green for the first time all winter. The trees are full of young leaves. Oh, yes, Jenny, yes, yes. Nature knows it's Easter. Ah, uh, how could grass or trees know about Easter? Why, honey, a tree probably knows more about Easter than any living thing. You mean that this big tree here knows it's Easter? Mm -hmm, that's right. Well, just look at it. See all those little leaves? They all face upwards toward the sun. Do you know why they turn that way? Our teacher says they turn up so they can get the sun. Well, she's correct. Yeah, They need the sunshine to grow. But there's another reason, too, if you care to hear it. Oh, yes. Well, now, you just settle down beside me here, and I'll, I'll tell you how a tree knows about Easter. Is this a true story, Grandpa? Well, you won't find it written in any history books, but, but nobody said it didn't happen this way. No. <laughs> Now, this is about a tree that lived many, many years ago in a land that's quite away from where you and I are sitting now. Yeah. Now, like any other tree, this little fellow sprouted from a tiny seed and began to grow. Oh, he could hardly wait for the day when he'd be able to push his head up out of the ground. So the little tree rested and gathered his strength for the big day. And finally, he felt that he could make it. So, bracing himself on his tiny roots, he gave a mighty push, and he popped out of the ground like a jack-in-the-box, yes. Now, for a few minutes, the bright sunlight dazzled the young tree. But when he got used to it, he looked around, yes. Oh, he was pleased to see that he was growing on top of the hill with a wonderful view of the countryside. And not far away, he could see a small town, and nearby, a highway running into the town. He started to turn and look in the other direction when he was suddenly startled by a voice that boomed out. Hello there, little tree. He looked up quickly, and there, towering above him, just a few yards away, was a huge tree smiling down on him. See, you must be a thousand feet tall. <laughs> no, not quite, I'm afraid. I figure I'm only about 40 feet. 
Ah, but that's high enough, I guess. For I'm really good and strong, and that's what really counts. Gosh, will I ever grow as tall as you? I'm sure you will, before you know it, too. Just get plenty of sunshine, send your roots down deep, and get lots of nourishment from the earth. There's more to this growing business than just standing here, isn't there? Yes, but you'll catch on, all right. Besides, I'll be here to help you if you ever need it. Gee, thanks, friend Tree. You've helped me a lot already. Gosh, I hope I can remember all the things I'm supposed to do. Well, the days went by and little tree grew like a weed. By now he was almost six inches high. And the big tree looked after him like a mother. Every night he'd keep watch over his small friend until little tree was asleep and then the big tree too would relax and fall asleep. But one night, while they were both sleeping, a great storm broke over the land. Rain spilled over the hilltop as if dumped from giant buckets. Little Tree woke with a start and, oh, was seized with panic. He could feel himself being torn from the earth by the rushing waters. He was still quite young, you see, Janie, and, and his roots weren't deep enough or strong enough to hold him against the torrents of water that swelled around him. He called frantically to his friend. Help! Help, friend Tree! Yeah, but the big tree was sound asleep, <laughs> yes. He enjoyed a good rainstorm, for he was strong, and the wind and the rain were like a lullaby to him. A howling gust of wind swept over the hill, bending little tree almost to the ground. As he straightened up, he shouted once more with all his might. Help! And this time, his big friend heard and looked down. He saw the danger in a moment and quickly brought some of his biggest branches into position over Little Tree, forming a great umbrella to shield him from the driving rain. Hold tight, Little Tree. Don't try to fight the wind. Sway with the wind. Sway with it, like me. Watch me. See? Sway with the wind. Oh, I see. <laughs> like, like this. Oh, yes, this is much better. That's it. You'll make it all right now. The storm's dying down. That was a close one. Gosh, I've never been so scared in my whole life. <laughs> yes, I believe you were. Why, you turned white as a birch tree. Well, it didn't take long for Little Tree to recover from the storm, and as time passed, he developed into a beautiful tree. Actually, he wasn't such a small tree anymore. But his friends still called him Little Tree, and the name seemed to stick. Now, as he grew up, Little Tree began to think more and more of what might happen to him when he reached the age when he would be of value as lumber. And he and the big tree would wonder about it by the hour. Yes, I've been thinking about it for years, Little Tree. I'd like to be made into an ox cart and travel about the country. I'd like to see what's beyond those hills in the distance. Oh, I can't decide what I'd like to do. You know, being made into an ox car would be kind of fun at that, Tree. <laughs> yeah, I hope you get your wish, old friend. Well, I have hopes. Hey, see that rickety old ox cart coming along the road there now? See, it looks like it's about ready to fall apart. That's what I mean. That man's had that old cart for almost 20 years now. And he's ready for a new one. But... Why do we have to be cut down and made into something at all? Why can't we just keep on growing here like we are? Well, maybe we will. You see, little tree, I believe that everything on Earth is put here for some reason. Oh, shucks. What good are those pesky little bugs that bother us all the time? Well, now, don't forget that while they annoy us, they're food for the birds. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> As usual. Well... The big tree got his wish sooner than he expected. For a few weeks later, the man who owned the old ox cart came with saws and axes to cut him down. Little tree was sorry to lose his friend, but the big tree was so happy that little tree found he was feeling happy too. Well, goodbye, old friend. I'll wave to you every time you pass by the roadway. Goodbye, little tree. Take good care of yourself. Maybe I'll see you in a big building somewhere. Goodbye. And the man hauled the big tree away toward the town. And Little Tree was left alone on the hill. Well, 
the years went by and Little Tree became a familiar landmark on the hilltop. By now, he'd grown quite large and the people of the town always stopped to rest in the cool shade he cast for them. He was happy, for he felt that he was performing a useful service in offering a shady rest haven for the travellers along the road. But one quiet night, a strange thing happened. Little Tree was awakened from his sleep by an odd sound. Yeah, it seemed that he could hear music, and yet it was music such as he'd never heard before. It was almost as if the angels themselves were singing. And then, looking about, he saw the brightest star that ever shone lighting up the heavens. Little Tree's leaves were as a thousand eyes, and he turned them all to watch. The star seemed to cast a light down on one small village some distance away. He heard people speak of the village. It was called Bethlehem. Little Tree didn't know or understand what had happened this night, but, but a wonderful calm seemed to settle over the land, which made him feel that all was right with the world. Well, Janie, the years went by happily for Little Tree. By this time, he was a full-grown, beautiful tree. His trunk was hard, his limbs firm, and his leaves were the greenest of any tree for miles around. Oh, he was happy, yes, but he, he still couldn't help wondering if he would ever be cut down and made into something useful. I guess it's natural to want to be something other than what you are. Maybe a bridge to carry people across some great river. Or maybe a huge temple somewhere. And then, too, it, it'd be nice to be made into an ox cart like my old friend and get to travel all over the country. But I wouldn't care what it was. Just as long as it was something to help people. Oh, well, maybe someday my turn will come. Yes, but men seem quite content to let Little Tree continue his duties as a shade tree. Every day, dozens of people would stop to rest beneath his limbs. Then, one day, a small group of men stopped to rest in the shade under his branches. This was a common occurrence, but, but somehow Little Tree was attracted to one of the travellers. He was dressed as any other man, but there was something in his face, something about his quiet manner that set him apart from the other men. And of all the hundreds who'd stopped to rest at his feet, this man was the very first who ever paused to admire Little Tree and remark on what a fine tree he was. Here he watched them all as they talked and finally moved on down the road. He thought about them long after they'd gone and, and he thought especially about the one with a kind face. One evening, as Little Tree was preparing to settle himself for the night, he saw a great storm gathering in the distance. Huge black clouds had already blocked out the sun, and the wind swished through his branches, warning the birds to take cover. This looks like a real storm. So Little Tree thought to himself, Oh, well, storms don't frighten me anymore. I just hope it doesn't blow so hard that it keeps me awake all night. The storm came up quickly. Thunder boomed. Lightning lit up the sky, and suddenly at the height of the storm, a streak of lightning seared its way from a cloud and struck Little Tree with a mighty crash. His trunk was split almost in two by the blast, and he felt the burn to the very tip of his roots. Little Tree was stunned for several minutes. Yeah, but... When he was able to move again, he gathered all his strength and tried to hold himself together to, to last out the storm. He knew he could do nothing to repair the damage until morning. He was too weak. But gradually, yes, gradually the storm passed, and morning dawned over a clear sky. All the earth was fresh and glistening. It was a lovely day. Oh, but Little Tree couldn't enjoy it, no. Now he looked at himself in misery. His trunk was split by a charred black hole, and the burn still ached all through him. 
Oh, oh, if only someone would bind up my trunk with a rope or something to close that terrible gap, I know it would heal. Won't someone please help me? Yes, but no one offered to help, Little Tree. And as the weeks became months, Little Tree grew weaker and weaker. His leaves began to wither and drop away until his once beautiful foliage was all but gone. He began to give up all hope of ever recovering. No one seemed to care whether he lived or not. Then, one evening towards dusk, Little Tree noticed a lone man approaching along the road. Even in the twilight he recognized him. It was the man with a kind face who'd admired him that day so long ago. He seemed weary and troubled as he slumped to the ground to rest. It was so seldom he had company anymore that Little Tree forgot about sleep, kept his eyes on his lonely guest. He watched as the man did a strange thing. He rose to his knees, turned his face toward the heavens, and closed his eyes as if he were asleep. And yet he knew he wasn't asleep, no. And so all through the night he watched him, puzzled. Just before dawn, the man arose and prepared to leave. But then he seemed to notice Little Tree for the first time and looked at him for a long while. Little Tree wished that he could make himself disappear, for he imagined the man must be remembering what a beautiful tree he was when they last met. As he watched, the man placed his hands over the charred hole in the tree trunk. Little Tree felt, ah, oh, completely relaxed for the first time in months. And as his visitor walked away toward the town, he fell fast asleep. The next morning he awoke with a start. A great crowd of people had gathered around him. They were looking at him and pointing, and Little Tree looked at himself to see why he was so sudden at such an oddity. And then he looked again. It was amazing. He was exactly as he had been before the storm. His trunk was whole, all his leaves were there, everything about him was just as it had been in his most beautiful days. He listened to the people up in the road. Yes, yes, and Little Tree agreed, it's like a miracle. It was indeed a miracle, yeah. And he became the popular landmark on the hilltop once more, with passers-by always stopping to rest in his shade. And yet, somehow, in spite of his own happiness, there was an uneasy tension in the air. Little Tree couldn't understand it, no. No, people stood about in small groups, muttering to themselves and arguing. Then, one day, several men with saws stopped before Little Tree and began to look at him from all sides. Little Tree thought, oh, surely his big day had come at last, and he shouted to the birds in his branches. At last! At last I'm going to be made into something. Oh, and it'll be something wonderful. I just know it will. Yeah, but instead of setting their saws in his trunk, the men climbed into his branches and sawed off one of his biggest limbs and carried it away with them. Little Tree was perplexed. He couldn't understand what they would want to make with just one limb. Wondered about it all that evening. And the next day, it was still puzzling him, when he noticed a large procession coming along the road. There were many soldiers and hundreds of men and women, and as they drew nearer, the bark about his trunk stiffened, and he remained still as stone. For there, leading the procession, was the man with the kind face. A 
And then Little Tree saw what had happened to his limb. It had been used to make a wooden cross. Time and again the man stumbled and fell under the weight of the great cross. But no one tried to help him. No. No, the mob threw stones, made fun of him. Here, Master. Here. Let me help you. Here, there. Away with you. Please. It is too heavy for one man. Let me help him. He needs no help. He is king. He is God. Or so he says. Let him call forth his angels if he needs help. Come, Master. Lean on my shoulder. Away, I say. Please, sir. Let me help. I have all the help he needs right here. My whip. <laughs> See, that's all the help he needs. You will sadly rue the day you laid a hand on the master, I promise you. And I promise you, you'll rue the day you try to interfere, meddler. All right, along with you, king. We have it all day for this business. Come, maybe a few more stones will hurry him along. Out of the way, fool, or else you may find yourself in similar straits. Take me, take me gladly instead of him. Away, we have the man we want. But he is innocent. Innocent? You heard Pilate's order. I, I heard... He found no fault with him. Then you heard the people's order. They said crucify him. Now be gone that we may carry out justice. Onward! As Little Tree watched the procession reach the top of the next hill, he could scarce believe his eyes. three crosses and on one of them they had nailed the man with the kind face little tree knew that this must surely be the ugliest day in all the world's history for the first time in his life little tree cried cried until all his leaves were wet from the tears and soon all the trees in the world knew what had happened, and they cried too, for they all knew of the wonderful thing the man had done for Little Tree. And then what happened, Grandpa? Well, Janie, for two whole days, not a bird sang, not a leaf stirred on a tree, not a cricket chirped. It was as if the whole earth were dead. But on the morning of the third day, That morning was different. Yeah. Little Tree could feel it from the moment he awoke. The birds were singing, the sunshine was warm. The world was suddenly happy again. And then later, he knew why it was happy again. For there, walking along the road toward him with his faithful little band of followers, was the man the crowd had nailed to the cross. The man called Jesus. Little Tree was so happy, waved his branches in the wind, and his leaves all danced with joy. He has come back. He lives, he lives. Little Tree watched as the men stopped beside him. They listened to the man as with a kind face he spoke to them for a long time. And then as he spoke, he began to drift gently upward from the earth into the sky. Little Tree turned all his leaves up to watch this, this amazing thing. He suddenly had a feeling the man was leaving. Leaving never to return. And he cried out after him. Please, please don't go. Though he knew the man would never be able to hear him, a tree, speak. And yet somehow the man did seem to hear. For he turned to Little Tree and said... Keep watch for me, little tree, for someday I shall return. And with that, he drifted further and further upward into the sun until he seemed to be lifted into heaven itself. And little tree did keep watch. 
Yes, each day he would turn all his leaves upward toward the sun and follow it closely from dawn to sunset. And soon all the other trees on earth heard what had happened and they too turned their leaves upward, keeping watch with little tree. Yes, and so it is that even today every tree turns its leaves upward toward the sun, keeping watch as little tree first did centuries ago. This is Dick Contino again. You know, like Little Tree in our story, we all like to feel we can be useful and helpful. And one of the great pleasures in life is knowing that we're useful and helpful in an undertaking that means something. None of us can be happy if we live just for ourselves because the job of living comes from giving. Yes, giving ourselves to something we know is bigger and better, worthier and more enduring than we are. That's why the greatest pleasure in living is giving ourselves to God. When a family joins together to give themselves to God and family prayer, they are united in a joy and happiness that only family prayer can bring. I guess we all know from experience that it's true. Whatever we give to others comes back to us in some way or another. And whatever we give to God comes back a hundredfold. So let's give God a little time in our homes each day. Let's take a little time out to join together with our family for family prayer. Then we'll really know how true it is that the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you the story of Little Tree, starring Edmund Gwen. Dick Contino was your host. Others in our cast were Francis X. Bushman, Marvin Miller, John Stevenson, Richard Beals, Guy Hamilton, and Kathy Johnson. The script was written by William Lutz with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present The Way of the Cross, starring Jeff Chandler. Maureen O'Sullivan will be your hostess. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.